Hello guys and welcome to our YouTube channel Scratch Learners. In this video, we are going to discuss about the instruction set in 8085 microprocessor. In the last video, we have already discussed about the data transfer instructions and the arithmetic instructions. So I recommend you to please watch out that video and you can get that link in the i button in the above. So let's begin with the logical instructions. So as the name suggests, these instructions perform various logical operations with the content of accumulator. That means here AND, OR and XOR operations that is exclusive OR operations can be performed with the content of accumulator and with any 8-bit number or the content of register or the content of memory. And the result whatever we have got is stored in the accumulator. Similarly, each bit in the accumulator can be shifted either left or right to the next position by using rotate operation. And here compare is used to compare two 8-bit numbers or compare some content of registers or a content of memory with the content of accumulator. Similarly, complement is used to complement the content of accumulator. That means all zeros are replaced by ones and all ones will be replaced by zeros. So let's understand about all these operations one by one in details. There are three instructions for performing the AND operation. First one is ANAR. R is any registers in the 8085 microprocessor. So this is used to perform the AND operation between the accumulator content and the register content. Whereas ANAM is used to perform the AND operation between the content of accumulator and the content of memory. And ANI 8-bit is used to perform the AND operation between the content of accumulator and an 8-bit data that is being supplied here. Here, let's say the content of accumulator is this one, 10110110, that is B6 in hexadecimal. And let's consider any register C, which is having the content 01001010, that is 4A in hexadecimal. So, if we perform the AND operation between the content of accumulator and that of C register, then what we will get in AND, the resultant will be 1 only if both the bits are 1, right? So, 0 and 0 equals to 0, 1 and 1 equals to 1, 1 and 0 equals to 0, 0 and 1 equals to 0. Similarly, 1, 0 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 1, 0. So, we will get this and this is being stored in accumulator and this is equals to 0 to x, right? So, this is the result after ANAC. Similarly, if we consider ANAM, so here we have to take in account the content of memory. So, let's say the memory is pointing to this location 4001 hex and this location is containing a data E1. Okay. So, now the content of accumulator will be ended with the content of memory. Right. So, if we consider the content of accumulator as B6, that means B6 will be ended with E1. And whatever result we will get, it will be stored in accumulator only by default. Similarly, in A and I 8-bit, here we will supply that 8-bit number. So, if we take an example, A and I, let's say 0, 05 hex. Okay. And we consider the content of accumulator as the same one. Okay, and here we have the value as 0, 5 hex, that means this, right? So, here we will get 0 and 1 equals to 0, 1, 0 is 0, 1, 1 is 1, 0, 0 is 0, 1, 0 is 0, 1, 0 is 0, 0 and 0. So, here we are getting 0 and here 4 hex. Okay, now the same thing occurs in case of OR operation. For Performing the OR operation with any register, we have the command ORAR. For performing the OR operation with memory, we have ORAM. And for performing it with 8-bit uh, data, we have ORI 8-bit data. Okay. Here, I am considering the content of accumulator as the same one. 
and I am taking a register B which is containing this data. Okay. So, if we perform the OR operation then 0 1 is 1, 1 1 is 1, 1 0 1, 0 1 is 1, 1 1 is 1, 1 0 equals to 1, 0 or 1 equals to 1 and 1 or 1 equals to 1. So, here we have got all the 8 bits as 1. So, this is the data FFX. So, it will be the result and it will be in accumulator. In the same way, we can perform the OR operation with the content of memory. If we take the same example, then the content of accumulator is 10100110. And the content of memory, that means here we have E1. So, it will be 11100001. Right. Yes. So, 0 or 1 equals to 1. 1 or 0 equals to 1, 1 0 is 1, 0 0 is 0, 1 0 equals to 1, 1 1 is 1 and this will be the data after performing the odd operation between these two elements and the result will be in accumulator only. Similarly, if you consider any 8 bit data, let us say the same thing here we have considered 0 5 hex. So, we will perform ORI 0 5 hex. So, I think you can perform the operation in the same way. In the same way for performing the ZOR operation, we have XRR for performing register, XRAM for performing the exclusive OR with the content of memory and, and XRI for performing the ZOR operation with an 8-bit data present here. So, here if you take the content of accumulator as this one and take a register D which is containing this okay and let's perform the zor operation between these two so here what we will get in zor operation whenever we get same input then we will have the output zero and if the inputs are different then we have the output one so zero zor zero equals to zero here zero one one zero is one zero one is one one and one so zero one and zero is 1, 0, 1 is 1 and 1, 0 is 1. So, this will be the data after performing the ZOR operation and it will be stored in accumulator. I think in the same way you can perform the ZOR operations with the content of memory and with an 8-bit data. So, I am skipping these. For comparing the content of registers with the content of accumulator, we have two instructions. First one is the CMPR. It will compare with the register content and we have CPI. 8 bit that means the content of accumulator will be compared with the 8 bit data provided here. So, what these are used? So, these instructions are used to compare the content of registers. So, let us see all the cases which will occur on comparison of two data. So, let us consider I am comparing the content of accumulator with a register B. That means here the content of accumulator is compared with the content of B register, right. So, here cases can arise when A is greater than B, when A is equals to B and when A is less than B, right. So, for checking the status whether which data is greater or lesser, we use two flag registers. The first one is the carry flag and the second one is the zero flag. When A is greater than B, then the carry flag will be zero and the zero flag will also be zero. That means both the data will be reset to 0 and when A is equals to B, then the carry flag is reset to 0 and the 0 flag is set to 1. In the same way, when A is less than B, then the carry flag will be set to 1 and the 0 flag will be set to 0. So, by checking the status of the carry and 0 flag, we will decide which data is greater or lesser. And here for complementing the content of accumulator, we have instruction CMA. This is complement the content of accumulator. So, if A is the accumulator, then it will convert it into A bar. Okay. And we are also having CMC instruction. This is used to complement the carry flag. That means if the carry flag is CY, 
then by executing CMC it will be converted into CY bar that means the complement of the carry flag. In the same way we have instruction STC this is used to set the content of carry flag to 1 that means by executing this the carry flag will always contain 1. Now we have rotation instructions towards left and right. For left rotation we have two instructions RLC and RAL. RLC is rotate accumulator left without carry and RAL is rotate accumulator left through carry. Here we have the difference. Okay. So in this instruction each bit is shifted to the adjacent left position. Okay. So if we rotate this content of accumulator towards left then this 0 will come to this position. 1 will be here. Then here 1. 0, 1, 1, 0. Now this one that is present in the bit D7 will come to D0. Okay. So this one will be stored here. Right. And the content of the carry flag will also be changed according to the content of the bit D7. So here it was 1. So the carry flag CY will be modified from 0 to 1 here also. It was 0 previously, now it will be 1. Now if we again rotate the accumulator content towards left, then this one will be here. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and this 0 will again come to this location and as well as in the carry flag. So 0 will be here and here. Okay, this is RLC. Now if we talk about RAL, then here each bit is shifted to the adjacent left position. So here this 0 will come to here 1 then 1 0 1 1 0. Let here the carry flag contain 0 in the beginning. Okay we have initialized it with 0. So here we have seen the bit D7 will be shifted to the bit D0 but here the bit D7 is not shifted to D0 rather it will be shifted to the carry flag and the content of carry flag which was previously there will go to the bit D0 of accumulator. So this 0 comes here and this one goes in the carry flag. Similarly if we again perform the same operation then all these bits are shifted to left ok 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and this bit D7 will now go to the carry flag. And the content of carry flag will be shifted to the bit D0. That means this one will be stored here and D7 bit will go to the carry flag. Okay. So this is the major difference between RLC and RAL. In the same way we have instructions RRC and RAR for rotation towards right. So this is rotate accumulator right without carry and this is rotate accumulator right through carry. Here we are considering the content of accumulator as this one and the carry flag is 0 in the beginning. Now if we want to rotate these bits towards right then this one will come here 0 will be here then 1 1 0 1 1 right. Now what about this 0 that is the bit D0. So it will go to the D7 bit that means this 0 will be stored here and this 0 will also be stored in the carry flag. Now if we again perform the same rotate operation then 0 will be here, 1 will be here, then 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 and this 1 will go to the bit D7. Right. So 1 will be stored here and the same bit will be stored in the carry flag also. So this will be the result after rotating the content of accumulator two times towards right. Now here if we consider the shifting through carry. So let's rotate these bits. So this one will be here. Then 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And this one. Now we need to store here. Right. So the content of carry will come to this location. And these bits. And this bit at the bit D0 previously will go to the carry flag. Okay. So this is the rotate right through carry. Now if we again perform the rotation operation here 
then we will get 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 and here we have 1 right so this carry flag will come to here and this 1 will be stored in the carry flag so in this way the carry flag content gets updated with the bit d0 right and whatever data is present in the carry flag comes in the bit d7 so this is the difference between rrc and rar so i hope you are clear with all these rotate instructions and this is all about the logical instructions in 8085 microprocessor we will discuss about the branching instructions and the iu and machine control instructions in the next video so if you like this video please subscribe the channel and like the video see you in the next video thank you